We've had several videos up until this point on this channel about taking down Giovanni from whether you're a beginner, or whether you're an expert, or anything in between, and now something else that's sort of thrown into the mix is the Galar Pokemon entering the game. Some of them have already been in the game since before Ultra Unlock 3. You're seeing that we're starting off though with mostly new ones, although Berserker, you can obviously argue for being in the game previously. And so anyway, we're gonna switch into Phalanx very early on. You do want to switch to get the advantage of the stun time, so for those who don't know, whenever you switch a Pokemon out or Team Go Rocket switches, it could be manually switching or them fainting, then uh, the Team Go Rocket side's Pokemon are going to stand still for just about three seconds. It's for several turns, and so it's a really good time where you just need to be generating energy for your charge attacks, so don't use them while Team Rocket is frozen. Now, the same goes also for when we use a charge attack. Of course, this is just for the beginners who don't know that information. Phalanx, obviously being a fighting type, we are going to resist the Persian when it's using faint attack. This would go very, very differently if that Persian had Scratch. So again, very, very differently. You need to handle the battle different whether the Persian has Scratch or Faint Attack. Both Persians that we're going to be fighting today for the lineups that you're going to see uh, do have Faint Attack, so your fighting types are great. Obstagoon, really great. We're going to see that pretty soon. This Phalanx right now, though, can spam out because Counter is its fast move. That can generate a lot of energy per hit. But also, we have Brick Break, and Brick Break is one of the fighting charge moves that it's. Uh, you can see that it has the three bars. Of course, when you look at your Pokemon's page, it doesn't really require a lot of energy, but it really just the kind of trade off to that is that it's really not going to do a lot of damage back to the opposing Pokemon. And especially right here, he, uh, Giovanni's got a Machamp in the middle spot right now. So that Machamp is just taking neutral damage from fighting type attacks like that one. And so, anyway, we have, of course, a Machamp with Bullet Punch, which can be different than, of course, a Machamp with Counter. And so, you know, once again, I've had plenty of videos on this channel that have sort of taken on Giovanni from all sides. This is just sort of as the cookie crumbled, I wanted to show off the Galar Pokemon. Dang, we were so close actually right there. We had one hit away basically from that uh, Machamp. So the, it's kind of good news, bad news. You know, it sucks because we wasted a shield obviously right there. It wasn't a complete waste, but I'm just saying. It did allow us one extra hit though before this Ho-Oh comes in to just keep on generating more energy. Now the Ho-Oh is going to resist your Berserker like crazy, you know, depending on whether, if, you, if you're going with these same moves, play rough. Uh, we do have close combat on our Berserker. Both of those are going to be resisted, like I said. And so anyway, that Berserker is going to fall. It's okay. We kind of uh, expected this to happen, of course. And so what we can do is wait for this cooldown timer at the top middle of the screen before switching in. Just wait for that to get close to one. That's just so that we can make sure that the switch is available for our Pokemon. So again, we're going to be able to use a Brick Break right here and then switch out. And uh, that's because we wait for that cooldown to happen. You know, every time that you switch, there is a cooldown before you can switch again. You know, you can't just infinitely switch. Otherwise, we'd beat this in like two seconds, right? So anyway, the key for our Zashi in here is for it having wild charge if we're going to be going up against the Ho-Oh with it. Like, if that's what we intended to do, then wild charge would be the move. Obviously, you'd go different moves to take on different things. So, you know, it's like you may not want your Zashian with wild charge, but again, this is just for taking on Giovanni. And obviously, Zashian, we couldn't catch it at a uh, Great League level. Other Everything else we're going to show is within the Great Leagues. Although, one little caveat right here. We're going to show two different Stun Fisks, uh, Galarian Stunfisk, of course. One of them is over the Great Leagues. It just is how it kind of happened that my, we're using my dad's account, so it's not even my account. He still has his Super Rocket Radar. Speaking of that, actually you saw us escape from that last battle, and that's the reason, is we wanted to save the Super Rocket Radar, so I could keep on bringing these videos out to you guys. So Obstagoon is sort of the end game right now, or the beginning game, maybe we should say, for Persian, because we obviously switched out to the Obstagoon. You want to get a lot of hits in, but you know, you kind of have this, like, choice or you're at an impasse where, okay, I could let my Obstagoon take a whole bunch of damage, because it's obviously going to resist the faint attack that Persian is throwing out at us. We could get down to, you know, like, one hit away from death or something like that, and have all that energy generated up, but with Counter as our fast move, and uh, combined with Night Slash right here, you can see that really we don't need to, like, wait all that long, and there's going to be an obvious chance for you to get the buff that comes with Night Slash right here, and so the fact that he is going to shield twice, of course, your first two charge attacks, you should definitely use Night Slash for those. You know, you would get super effective damage with cross chop in this case because Persian of course is weak to fighting type attacks now the same is also going to go for his middle spot Pokemon which is going to be Cloyster and uh, so again it's like well we could use of course our cross chop move to get fighting type super effective damage but when we have sort of these free hits I like to call it where we've got a lot of energy generated I do want to actually go with another night slash until we basically don't really have energy in reserve so what does that mean it means that I've been like overcharging you know I've just been gathering more energy so I could actually keep on 
aren't doing charge attacks at any time, sort of, you know, and so the point being we sort of put that in reserve to do cross chop later on, so when I didn't really have any energy left, that's what I did. And so ladies and gentlemen, sort of a spicy pick, this is again just for Galar Pokemon if you really didn't have something else, so like there are so many better Pokemon and we've shown them off, okay, so like again I've got tons of videos on this channel and I will link to that full playlist for Giovanni so you can see all of those if you haven't ever seen one of my videos before, so like I gotta reiterate, you know, Greedent, not your main, plus I hate Greedent by the way, but anyway, not gonna be like your main choice that you're gonna want to take on Cloyster. It's just that Greedent was spicy and it was a Galar pick and they're gonna be super plentiful because Squovid is everywhere, you guys. So the key there though was Greedent with Bullet Seed, so you know, giving it a grass type move actually does let it be super effective against Cloyster, where normally you would think it probably wouldn't be, but again, it having that grass type is gonna be super effective against Cloyster, and so here's kind of the main differences that I was going to show between these two screens that we're watching right now is the Stun Fisk over on the right side has Rock Throw, and so Ho-Oh, you really do want to use Rock anytime that you can. You don't always have that option, I know, but like if you can use Rock, Ho-Oh is Fire and Flying, and both of those each take super effective damage from Rock type attacks, and so your Rock is going to be super, super effective, 256% damage, so a lot higher. And on the left, we're going to see kind of as this like uh, right screen finished out, it's interesting because it looked like, you know, we would lose that and everything. You can win that. I, I made a few mistakes here and there. And the other key to this is that, like, you guys, I'm facing this right now with a level 40 account. That's my dad's. For instance, like, my own personal account is level 46. Team Go Rocket is going to scale their CP up and down based on your trainer level. So the higher your trainer level is, the more powerful the Team Go Rocket Pokemon are going to be. And so here's kind of your other option is if you have a Galarian Stun Fist and absolutely no charge TMs or don't want to give it a second move, you can run Muddy Water on it. Now this Galarian Stunfisk right here is in the 1200s on the CP, and so obviously it's going to be under leveled, underpowered, and everything with Muddy Water. Now, like I said, Rock Throw is going to be sort of the key if you want to do a lot more damage. You know, you're still going to be picking it off with like little by little damage, and in that case, you're actually using Mud Shot, which is not super effective. It's going to be resisted by the Ho Oh, but the reason you're doing that is actually for the energy gains. The energy is huge. But you can see this Ho Oh has a hidden power. The cool thing about Galarian Stunfisk is, unless the Ho Oh was using Incinerate, your Galarian Stunfisk is going to resist most of those fast attacks. Again, Incinerate, or if the hidden power was actually fighting type, it wouldn't be able to take that on. So once again, you'll see us run, but you'd be able to beat those, and it'd be even easier if you were a lower level than me and had higher CP. But you've got to know that every single fight is different based on which Pokemon he sends out, what their moves are, and what your Pokemon's moves are. So if you want to learn more about it, feel free to click an end screen on screen if you have annotations on. And thanks for viewing.